What's up everyone, welcome to the fourth episode of the UX Portfolio series. In this video, I'm going to give you some quick tips of what not to do in a UX design portfolio. Some of them are my personal recommendations, some of them are verified by experienced designers that I spoke with in the past. By the end of this video, you should have some new understanding and are ready to iterate on the next version of your UX design portfolio. Does it sound good? Let's get started and roll the intro. Good morning everyone, my name is Justine and I'm a designer working in Silicon Valley. Today we're gonna to be focusing on the red flags, the bad habits, common mistakes, designer might make in their UX design portfolio website. There are a lot of things can go wrong in a UX design portfolio if you just started. Let's look at six don'ts in a UX design portfolio. Six main things to pay attention to, six things that I don't recommend doing or I think is a bad idea, and I will explain why. To continue the tradition of my UX design resume series, I'm gonna add the bonus content to this video. So watch till the end to find out more. Without further ado, let's dive right into it. Number one, don't let your process dominate. Within a given project in your portfolio, if you're showing more process of that project, how they come together, rather than the final design, the final detail of that project, that is a red flag. Don't get me wrong, the process is important, but that's just the framework. It's a framework that gets you to a good project. Think about it as like the, the blueprint or the floor plan of a house. You don't live in a floor plan, you live in a house, in a room with floors, tiles, walls, desk, bed, chairs, lightings, everything. One way to think about it is that the final design of your project is the product that you can put onto the shelf in a store. What would that be? So what are you gonna put? You're not gonna put a process, you're not gonna put the research, IDA, prototype, test, and all that loop on the shelf. You're gonna put the final product, the final project. A process is just the means to a final product. It's not the product itself. So in your portfolio, showcase the final design. You can show the process, but not too much. Let the outcome dominate. Celebrate the final design. Call out the details, put your app design in context, show your execution skills. So here's what you can do. If you're not sure if you're doing it right yet, there's a few easy ways to test. Method one, you can count how many images you have for process and how many images you have for your final design. If you have more images for the process, then of course you're showing more process than the final design. Method two, which is a more accurate way to measure this, but is slightly more complicated, which is to calculate, to measure how long of the page, how long of your project page that each of those takes up. So if let's say your process takes up three scrolls, and your final design only take up two scrolls, then obviously you're showing more process than the final design. Or to keep it simple, maintain a three to one or four to one ratio, meaning for every three images that you showcase your final design, you can have one image of the process. That should help prevent your process dominating the project. Number two, don't let side projects dominate. In your portfolio, you're probably showing between three to nine projects. So all the projects you have done in school or outside of school, your personal time, they are all competing for that nine slots. For those projects in which the scope is small, that doesn't have enough polish, depth, iterations, or the projects that are coming soon, they're not very useful in convincing people to hire you. The more of those projects you have, the more they will dilute the quality of your portfolio. Iteration, thought process, polish, depth, these are everything that a hiring manager will be looking for. And projects like those, those small scope projects, they're not gonna have those, which you can easily understand why it's a red flag. Even if you manage to talk about these projects with your potential hiring manager, you cannot elaborate too much because you have nothing to elaborate on. And this guarantee will be a losing piece. So here's something you can do. I'm gonna give you a checklist and see if your projects match those criteria. Projects that don't have enough scopes will include the following. Hackathon projects, weekend projects, projects that takes less than two weeks to complete, or less than two iterations, you didn't do much testing about it. 
This is not a comprehensive list, but you kind of get the idea. Some guideline I can give you is, for example, have one or two of these kind of side projects if you have four to six main projects. Projects that have depth that you can elaborate on. Number three, don't include unpolished projects. For any given project, maybe you spend a lot of time on it, four to six weeks, right, in your school, and you could have depth, you spend enough time on crafting the logic, sorting out everything, make sure it makes sense, the flow is good, you have great wireframes, but they're just not polished enough. There's no decent visual layer. There's something could be off, not perfectly aligned, not pixel perfect. It's better than side projects, but still, these are unpolished projects. Me going through all the interview process in 2019, now working in Silicon Valley, interviewing candidates, I can assure you, the visual quality, the polish matters. I have a real example. A designer friend of mine told me that the company were hiring designers. So they were looking at one candidate, the candidate went on site, go on that five hour interview. And the conclusion was that the cultural fit seems pretty good, they will pass, and they have good product thinking. They just were not so sure if they can execute, meaning the polish, being able to polish the project, polish the UI, craft it, all the elements. That aspect might be lacking, so they pass on that candidate. So apparently it is real. Number four, don't make your landing screen all about your profile picture, what you look like, and underwhelming projects. This one ties to number two, having a lot of side projects, and in addition to that, you have your profile picture front and center, you're advertising you like a model instead of you as a designer with a lot of projects. That is a red flag because you might be giving out an impression that you don't care too much, you don't care enough, you might not understand design well enough. You don't understand what hiring managers are looking for. Just don't confuse the recruiters and hiring manager. Because I can tell you when they do the first screening, they're gonna look for your projects. They're gonna look for your work. They wanna see your work. So if this is a design project, you know the users, recruiters and hiring manager. What are their needs? They need to see your projects. Then what do you do? You offer them your projects. Number five, don't let irrelevant projects dominate. For UX designers, product designers, you probably should have more mobile apps, websites, tablet apps, digital products, less physical design or installations, your drawings, your graphics, your music that you make. Don't get me wrong, you can still have a lot of depth in those areas, totally okay, totally awesome. You can have experience making music, you make great music, but this is a UX portfolio, so you get the idea. If your UX project is a kick, your ability to make great music is only cherry on top. So if I want to get a kick, I go to your website, but I see mostly cherries, then I would think I come to the wrong place. So just FYI, the reverse is true. If you are an industrial designer, you should have more physical product. Look at the color, material, finish, the form study, how would that form appeal to people emotionally rather than a lot of digital products. So depending on what you position you as a designer, you should focus on the main relevant, the core side of your project. Last one, number six, don't put up everything. As you know, in design schools, there's a thing called the process book, you document your entire process of development. It's great that you know your project from the beginning to an end, but if you include everything, the entire process into your portfolio, it will get super long, which means a few things. One, it's not user friendly, not recruiters and hiring manager friendly because they have to scroll so long to look at the details of your final design. And two, your project is probably lacking focus. It might also mean you are letting your process dominate. And three, you could get really hard to go through because you will have, for example, a 45 minute chat, video chat, you do screen share with your hiring manager and you expect to go through everything, two projects within 45 minutes, not likely. And in fact, I have to confess, I kind of made that mistake. I didn't include everything, but I included a lot of process. So I did not finish in my presentation in the 45 minute call. So I learned it the hard way. But again, I made a mistake, so you don't have to. So here's a few things you can do. You can select a few important moments to include. For example, maybe in your user testing, you discover some new user pattern, new user behavior, something that you learn from testing that you find insightful that you were like, oh, I did not know about this. 
Maybe you can include that to share with your potential hiring manager, to share out this design discovery. And you can pick three directions of your final design and highlight the difference between each, the pros and cons of each, while you arrive at those three directions. Rather than have six different explorations laying out on screen in your portfolio, they might get overwhelming. Here's another example. I showed my presentation to a designer at Pinterest and he told me, yeah, I don't know what I'm looking at. There's so many things. Just pick a few and highlight the differences. And of course, this might not be natural, the ability to pick selected moments. And it might take some practice. One thing that you can try to do to try to ease yourself in is that you can lay everything out in a project and then start to delete. Maybe I don't need this one. I don't need that one. And then you can slowly reduce from a whole process book into a few selected moments, into a more distilled final design presentation. In some of my previous videos, I know I said you need a lot of images to showcase your design. That is still true, but you don't want to overflow your website because overflowing means overwhelming. Just think about have 10 images, let's say, and if you only have 10 slots for images, which 10 aspects of your design that you want to showcase? You only have 10 slots, 10 images, what would you show? That could help force you, help you finalize the images that you want to showcase. And this also goes true for your projects. You have nine slots, which nine projects you want to put them in. So you might even arrive at a point that you have, let's say 20 really in-depth, really good projects, which now you're going to put them in. How would those projects, the nine that you pick from all the 20s, help showcase, help frame you as the designers that you want to be. So here are the six don'ts in the UX design portfolio. Hope you learned something new and ready to iterate on the next version of your UX design portfolio. Now, here comes the thing that you have been waiting for all along, the bonus content. I'm more than happy to take a look at your UX design portfolio and provide you some feedback. All you have to do is, one, smash the like button down below to help support me spending hours making this video. And two, let me know in the comment section down below that you have liked the video. And then you can send your UX portfolio link to my email, which you can find in the about page in my channel. Make sure to include your YouTube username so that I know you left a comment. Then I will take a look at your portfolio, provide you some feedback, and give you a shout out in my next video. Good luck to you all on your next portfolio iteration future internships and full-time jobs. That's it for today. Thank you guys for watching. If you find this video useful and insightful, please go ahead and destroy the like button for the YouTube algorithm. This is still a small channel, so every like counts, and I will greatly appreciate it. If you want to see more UX design videos like this, also consider smash the subscribe button as well. Doing so will tremendously help the channel and motivate me to produce more high quality content down the road. Have fun following your passion and keep designing a better See you on the next video. Cheers!